face. We are very pleased that we are able to present these issues because we, they do have financial implications. We can indicate, Chairpersons, that um, we tried our level best to ensure that these documents are, are aligned in the main with the national development uh, plan of our country, Vision 2030. And also our document, Chair, is also aligned with our international obligations which is the sustainable development goal, a special goal number number six that deals with issues of water and sanitation. And we've also tried to take into consideration the issues you raised, Chairperson, when you had an opportunity to receive the presentation from the Department of Performance Monitoring and Evaluation when they were giving you an assessment of our plans. But more importantly, we've also tried to align with some of the issues that in the Office of the Statistician General, when you make a presentation about how far we're fed as a country in terms of the provision of water and the challenges that uh, we've experienced over this period. Therefore, these documents in your, uh, at, at your disposal, they expose those particular issues around the alignment. Well, lastly, these current developments have necessitated some kind of an adjustment, including the adjustment with the financial provisions so that we are becoming a responsive department to deal with the current challenges our country faces. Those are the ways that one will put as a, a preamble so that we can, with your permission, co-chairs, we allow our Director General Comrade Mbulelo to make the presentation on our behalf then you will guide us on how to interact with the document coverage chair. Thank you. Chairperson, mute yourself. Unmute yourself. Sorry about that. I apologize. Uh, I was saying that over to you, without further ado, over to you, uh, Mr. Uh, Changana. Uh, take us through uh, in line with what we are expecting. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, we have a, a slight problem with the sharing of the document, the PowerPoint document. We wanted to check if Koliswa cannot share it from uh, from your side. Sis Koliswa. Can you share the document from your side? I did, uh, D DG. Is it not on the slide and the screen now? No, it's on the slide. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, Chair. Koliswa, just press F5 and it will, it will make the page bigger. Is Here it we go. Fine now? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, uh, coaches. Let me first uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present the strategic document, uh, the strategic plan, and our APP. I am accompanied by my colleagues who are going to assist me in presenting this document. Uh, the first part, I will deal with the situational analysis, the overview, uh, of the strategic plan, Baba Alwa Mayrayaka is going to assist me with the annual performance plan. The CFO is going to assist me in presenting the medium the medium term financial estimates. I will then ask the acting uh, uh, both the acting CFO will assist me with uh, part three of the presentation and uh, acting DDG. Uh, infrastructure will assist me with part four of the annual performance plan. Next slide. DG. Yes. Uh, you have an you have an hour to present uh, already. On uh, uh, DM has taken you five minutes, so you must distribute the that time correctly so that you don't overlap. On other on members' uh, uh, interaction with your presentation. 
It's a short presentation, Chair. We will do it uh, within an hour. In fact, I think we're likely to do it within 30 minutes. Thank you very much for uh, reminding us of our time. Uh, Chairperson, we're presenting a 2020-2021 medium-term strategic plan and our annual performance plan. Hello. Hello. Hey. Oh, hello. DG, we have lost you. Hmm. DG. Call so can you call? We have lost them. Why is this thing muting? They're not muting. Chairperson, can you hear me now? Yes, I'll start um, from the beginning. In, in terms of the presentation, we know the outline of your presentation and who's doing what, and, and start from the be beginning uh, because that part we didn't hear. Okay, I'm now on the introductory remarks. Yes. I think I lost you when I was dealing with the introductory remarks. Um, we are presenting our annual report and we, sorry, our annual performance plan and we're also presenting our strategic plan. I will take care of the strategic plan and my colleague, Baba Alwa, my Yaga Yaga will take care of the APP, the CFO will take care of the financial aspect of the APP, the acting CFO, and then uh, DDG Manas will take care of the the COVID-19 part, which is the last part, part four. Next slide, please. Next slide is giving the context. Uh, as the, the context and um, this just gives you an idea of uh, the environmental scan. This is uh, in our uh, master plan, the water and sanitation master plan. And uh, the figure there, I just want to state one point here, that uh, the three million are sold that we are talking about here is not a lack of access to water. It is about the reliability. Yeah. What is that now? I think someone is not muting each other. Uh, let's get all of us to mute. Please, honorable members and officials, uh, mute your your gadgets, please. Yeah. Okay, so this, this is captured in our master plan, the, this particular slide where we're talking about access to reliable drinking water, only 64% of households have access to a reliable water supply. And please underline the word reliable because uh, this means that the access is there, but the reliability is an issue. And we have discussed this in the, in the annual report. Next slide. Next slide, please. The next slide gives you an idea of our water resource mix, uh, it, uh, it tells you that uh, out of the available water, uh, the water use per source type at 98%, assurance level 77% is surface water, 14% uh, is return flows, and 9% is groundwater, and we have less than 1% of desalination. Uh, which is still a challenge because uh, we do have a very long coastline. There is no reason why desalination should be sitting at less than 1%. I know that in the past, the real challenge was uh, energy costs uh, associated with desalination. But if you look at the latest technology, uh, the energy is no longer a, a challenge. Uh, 
when it comes to desalination. Next slide. And the next slide is just giving you an idea of the water usage, uh, that uh, the bigger part of our water is used by agriculture at 58%. The latest figure is 58%. Uh, last year, we reported to you 60%, and that figure is going down now at 58%. You also have municipal, uh, in, which covers industries, commerce, urban and rural, domestic, at 30%, and then you have afforestation at 3%, and you have international obligations at 1%. You are very much aware that we do have international obligations with uh, uh, our neighbors, Lesotho, Namibia, Botswana, Mozambique, and Swaziland. Next slide. The next slide is simple registering the water use volumes in cubic meters per annum. It gives you an idea per uh, water management area. If you look at the VAL, the VAL is the biggest at 3.9 uh, million cubic, me cubic meters, and then it's followed by uh, uh, Pongola Mzimkulu region at 2.7, and then there is Ingoma Tiusu 2, and then Orange also at 2.2. So you can see in terms of, of um, all of our systems, if you look at every area, every management, water management area, you can see uh, the water usage. Uh, and the biggest of them all is VAL. And the interesting thing about VAL is that uh, it's not agriculture that is the biggest user of water there. It is uh, the industry and is, it is commerce. Next slide. In fact, this slide, the next slide, begins to show you uh, water usage uh, in the management area. If you look at the valve, which is on the far right, you can see that 50% of the water, of water usage in the valve is used by uh, uh, industry. It is used by urban and non-urban industries. Next slide. The next slide is introducing our strategic plan, but I want to start with uh, uh, that colorful picture on slide 12, uh, which gives you an idea of what we are uh, we are planning to do in the master plan. In our master plan, we talked about water and sanitation management. We talked about reducing water demand and increasing water supply. We talked about redistributing water for transformation. As you can see, uh, transformation is still a challenge. Uh, that 58% usage by agriculture is still predominantly white, and we do want to restructure uh, water usage. Uh, we also do cover regulating water and sanitation, managing effective water and sanitation services, creating effective and efficient institutions, and managing information, data. Um, we also talk about enhancing strategic water partnerships. These are all strategic prongs in the master plan, which will be converted into our strategic plan and also our, our APP. Next slide. The next slide is only intended to demonstrate the impact statement. What are the sources that are protected? This is what we want to achieve. It's a bold statement that we are making, and I'm sure you have seen this statement, and uh, it's more about protecting the resource it's more about uh, uh, supporting ecological and sustainably economic and social development that transforms access to water to redress racial imbalances. So this is a, a bold statement that we are making. This is what we want to achieve. Next slide. In the next slide, we're simply stating our targets in, the, in our MTSF. Remember, the MTSF was approved by cabinet and it was presented to you. Uh, in the MTSF, uh, we stated clearly that we want to achieve an efficient and effective and, develop, and development-oriented department. So this talks to the institution, the department itself, and then in the middle there, those are outcome indicators. You can look at them, financial recovery, ICT, communications, uh, international relations, we've got the targets there uh, on the far right. I'm not going to waste much of your time. We'll come back to these targets in the APP. 
The second target is the ecological infrastructure protected and restored. And we have the targets, the outcome indicator, the first outcome indicator is the number of river systems with water resource classes and determine the resource quality objectives. We have the target there, the baseline is 10, the five year target is six. Uh, we also have the waste discharge system target of three. We have the number of main stem rivers monitored and the target is 10. We have the number of rivers in which the river ecosystem status is monitored. The target is 83. The number of strategies developed for acid mine drainage, the target is two. This is a five year target. And then the mine water waste wastewater management plans, the target is three. This is again our five year target. Let's move to the next slide. The next slide, which is slide 16, uh, talks to water demand reduced and water supply increased. And there we're talking about water conservation and water demand strategies. We have a target there of four in the next five years. And then we have the water resource mix diversified. Earlier I've talked about water, resor uh, water resource mix, 77% uh, of that water resource is surface water. We want to reduce that to at least 30%, increase groundwater to 10%, um, increase return flows to 16%, increase desalination to 3% over the next five years, and also increase acid mine drainage to 1%. That's the target that we are setting for ourselves over the next five years. We also talked about the gauging stations, and the target there is two new gauging stations developed over the next five years. We also have one existing gauging station uh, maintained and refurbished, and we want to keep that gauging station properly um, uh, maintained. Next slide, slide 17. Slide 17 is about water and sanitation services managed effectively. And this talks to our water services authorities, and these are municipalities. We want to continue with the Municipal Strategic Self-Assessment, which is referred to as MUSA. We want those reports to be submitted annually over the next five years. So we need to have a MUSA report every year because the MUSA reports do help us to make decisions to support municipalities. Municipalities will tell us the kind of support that they need from the National Department of Water and Sanitation. So the target there is five. Enhance regulation of the water and sanitation sector. We want to enhance the our old program on green drop report, blue drop uh, on water supply, green drop on wastewater. Uh, the time frames for processing water use license application has been reduced to 90 days. Currently, we were we are at 120 days. In some instances, it's uh, even 300 300 days. The president in the State of the Nation's address pronounced that uh, we are going to reduce the water use license applications uh, to 90 days, and we want to stick to that. That target is a five-year target. Percentage level of compliance of water users in various sectors monitored, and the target there is going up to 65%. Let's move to the next slide, slide 18. Yes, slide 18, we have, uh, we have a target of water redistributed for transformation, and this is an important target. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have an effective and efficient institutions that will be established, and we're targeting to have two catchment management agencies. Uh, that's the baseline, in fact, two catchment management agencies, and the target is six catchment management agencies over the next five years. We're also targeting to have three regional water utilities over the next five years. And we also want to make sure that we have additional 41 water user associations established. The current baseline is 85. Now we're going to move to the APP, and the APP is our annual target. We're taking the, the five-year MTSF targets. We are now annualizing them so that we can contract with the public annually, or now we are going to arrive at our five-year targets. I'm now going to ask my colleague, uh, Baba Romay Gayak, to take us through the APP quickly. She's going to continue with the APP up until slide 42, and then the acting CFO will uh, present 
from slide 43. Over to you, sir, madam. Thank you, Gigi. Uh, if you go to slide 20, uh, it, it indicates the program one uh, deliverables over the medium term. Uh, of most importance in that slide is that we plan to support the government program that requires us to support uh, small, medium, micro enterprises uh, with a percentage of our budget that will be spent uh, procuring through them. So the first two indicators talk to that, the qualifying small enterprises and the exempted micro enterprises. Secondly, what we want to do is to ensure that uh, we deliver on the financial recovery and turnaround plan. As you will recall um, that the department had presented our financial, uh, the uh, building blocks of our financial and recovery turnaround plan. And our target is that we need to implement the 2020 uh, annual targets uh, wholly. And that is also going to be supported by uh, us spending our budget accordingly and also our ability to reduce our data days uh, to at least 120 days from the current 191. If you go to the next slide, it just talks to what the DG had mentioned before. We have got international uh, obligations and therefore we've got an international relations program and also uh, our communications plan. Then we go to the next slide 22. Slide 22 talks to what we are required by the department uh, to comply with. You will recall that the department has got some compliance requirements uh, which we have to satisfy. Uh, of most importance is that we should have um, our IT up and ready. We should have an approved audit action plan and we should also have a risk management plan. So those are the things mainly that we want to do whilst at the same time we keep our vacancy rate uh, below 10 percent and, um, and also coaching of uh, management uh, from levels 14 to 16 and also uh, ensure that uh, our our security uh, systems uh, our assessments are conducted if you go to slide 23 it talks to the second program which is our water planning and information management this is now where the core business of the department starts as the planning, uh, you will recall that the DG had mentioned in the in master plan that we plan on, on protecting our ecological infrastructure. And through that, we want to develop um, a, a water resource classes and also determine resource quality objectives. You see that uh, even though we are not planning to do uh, any deliverables as, as such for the 2020-2020 financial year, but we are planning to do a draft resource classes for 2020 and also the implementation plan and therefore the gazetting of the final classes and, and, and RQOs in the outer year of the medium term. We will still continue to do our river eco status and monitoring program. And you will see that uh, we plan on increasing the number of rivers uh, that we had monitored uh, from the previous financial year to 83 over the medium term. Slide 24, it talks to the water conservation and demand management strategies that we plan to deliver to support the outcome on reducing demand. We will we plan on developing these uh, um, water conservation, water demand strategies for the four sectors uh, over the medium term. And most importantly, we want to develop integrated water resource uh, plans. And these plans constitute the updating of the master plan, our reconciliation strategies uh, that are going to be completed where we reconcile the demand and versus the use uh, over the medium term. If you go to the next slide, it's a continuation of the plans that we plan to do. Uh, we plan to also develop um, and update uh, operating routes for our water supply systems and we've listed those water supply systems. And this is also supported by the risk and vulnerability assessments that we want to do uh, to guard against climate change for the various water supply systems. So we have indicated over the medium term, at least for the first financial year, which systems we're targeting. If you go to the 
Next slide, slide 26. It talks to our um, information management uh, activities. You will see that there uh, we plan on uh, maintaining the data uh, or the information systems that keep the, the, the data that we use for our planning purposes. So we've got various information systems that we have to maintain. Uh, a, a group of a number for the water resources is the four systems and the uh, water and sanitation information systems uh, also for the six uh, that are georeferenced information and uh, this is also supported by the gauging stations that the DG mentioned when he was talking in the strategy plan uh, which is the infrastructure on the ground that collects the information on the quality and it is fed into the information systems but most importantly from the eight large water supply systems that we have, we there are targets that are set on the reduction of water losses from the systems. So these eight large water supply systems, we plan on monitoring them and, and making sure that they comply with the targets as set uh, in the in them. And then the slide 27. Uh, we talk to the development of infrastructure. This talks to the water services infrastructure uh, that is funded through the, uh, the regional bank infrastructure and also the bulk or the mega infrastructure projects that we plan on doing. So this talks to the feasibility studies and all the um, implementation readiness studies and record of implementation decisions that we plan on doing, which will be given for to program three for implementation. And then uh, the last one, uh, activity or intervention, talks to our regulatory prescripts that we plan on doing uh, over the medium term slide 28. Uh, we plan on doing the draft bill and we submit it to cabinet for approval and also ensure that the third edition of the national water resources uh, strategy is developed. Slide 29 talks to the sanitation part of the regulatory prescripts. It talks to the integrated uh, sanitation plan and also the fecal sludge management strategy that we plan on doing uh, over the medium term. And then slide 30, it then talks to the management of uh, water and sanitation services. There, the department plans on a sub. Um, uh, assisting the municipality, district municipalities in completing five-year reliability water and sanitation delivery uh, implementation plans. And we have listed uh, the pro uh, provinces that uh, we are targeting over the 2020 financial year. And uh, the last document is to make sure that we are able to monitor holistically the effectiveness of their uh, water service authorities in, in providing water and sanitation services. Slide 31, uh, it talks to our infrastructure building program. In this program, we just listing a number of strategic water resources infrastructure that we plan on doing, those that will be implementation ready, those that will be under construction, and those that will be planned for completion. So that slide it just talks to that we listed the number of projects there that we plan on doing over the medium term. Slide 32, it talks to the water services side of it, which is the regional bulk infrastructure projects that will be constructed and also completed. Uh, owing to the numbers, we've just provided the planned projects that we plan on doing over the medium term. And for the first financial year, we've uh, indicated the projects that we plan on doing the province, and you will see in relation to what um, the status they had indicated. We've highlighted the biggest, the number of, of provinces that have got the biggest projects are those that are were deemed to be risk areas, and those we've highlighted in the darkish navy color for the honourable members. Slide 33. It talks to our water services infrastructure grant projects still uh, as a support. And these are your um, interim measures that we put and we support the municipalities whilst the, uh, the um, reticulation has not um, reached the households. And we've also listed the number of projects that we plan on doing over the medium term. 
um, and we have got um, projects that will be uh, constructed and those that will be completed. And uh, the number of interventions that we had planned um, that was prior the COVID, uh, that one talks to the one intervention that we had uh, the VAR and the completion of the existing bad sanitation systems that are currently in the free state and also in the, in the Northern Cape. Uh, slide 34, it indicates that as the department, uh, we've got uh, schemes that we have to maintain and we have to have um, scheduled maintenance. Uh, we have to uh, implement at least 80% of scheduled maintenance and the intention is that as we improve our maintenance, our scheduled maintenance will reduce. Uh, currently we're targeting 20% uh, and below, but uh, of as as we implement our maintenance, uh, we are foreseeing that that 20% unscheduled maintenance will drop substantially. If you go to slide 35, uh, it talks to the water supply agreements that we have with our biggest water uh, users, for example, your ESCOM, your SASO, where we supply uh, water to, uh, we have to uh, at least comply with 80% of uh, of the supply agreements and make sure that uh, there are no um, uh, disruptions there. And also to to ensure that uh, our dams are safe, are safe uh, the ones that we own in the department, we have to evaluate them and uh, make sure that they are rehabilitated, which is the, uh, the uh, subsequent uh, indicator, and ensure that our conveyance systems, our canals that transfer the water from our uh, dams into um, uh, the services are also uh, rehabilitated. Slide 36, it talks to the fourth program, which is our regulated um, regulation program. Uh, you will see that that supports the protection of our ecological infrastructure and there we've got um, management plans, uh, mine management and wastewater management plans that we plan to develop. Uh, the DG had mentioned in the strategic plan uh, the numbers uh, over the medium term uh, for the water and wastewater management plans, also for the asset mine drainage mitigation strategies. Uh, our plan on developing the waste charge discharge charge systems and our plan of monitoring the implementation of the resource directed measures uh, over the medium term. Slide 37, it talks to the environmental compliance uh, that is required. And so here the department plans on monitoring the various um, water users. Uh, industry, agriculture, forestry, their compliance with their water, uh, their water authorization, and um, yeah, and, and entitlements. So that those are the number of water users that we plan on, on, on monitoring over the medium term. And also, if we find uh, areas of non-compliance within those water users, we have uh, um, we will investigate. Uh, we will investigate. Um, them and also implement our green drop uh, regulatory assessments. Uh, slide 38 talks to the uh, implementation of the blue drop. Comrade, and also Chair, Comrade, Chair. Comrade, Chair. Comrade Chair. Oh, thanks. The, the slide was at run away from the screen. It's back now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let them continue. Um, DG, be careful. Uh, check your time as you present and yes. your, your team, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and then we go to slide 39. It talks to our enhancing. If you go to slide 40, it talks to what is information. We plan. indicated the categories of institutions that are streamlined, which is slide 40 to 41. And um, thank you very much, DG. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, DG. I will start from slide number 43 with the financial overview. 
Slide 43 briefly uh, reflects the budget for the department. You will see that uh, most of the trans of the budget, uh, plus 50 percent, has been allocated towards transfers and subsidies to our municipalities, as well as the water boards that we are using as implementing agents, followed by the payments of capital assets, which is a project that the department is implementing. The next slide is an overview of the regional bulk infrastructure grant. Again, it reflects the distribution per province. Most of the allocation for the year under review under indirect grant is for housing. That is mainly due to the Val River system intervention. It's a special allocation in that specific uh, province. Slide number 45 also is part of the regional bulk infrastructure grant, which is being implemented through the various uh, water boards of the department, and the details of the project are available. Slide number uh, 46, these are the water services infrastructure grants that the department is distributing. 3.4 billion is being paid directly to the municipalities, the municipal clearance uh, payment schedule, and 578 million has been allocated under Schedule uh, 6B, where the department is directly implementing this project, either through the implementing agents or through the internal capacity of the department. Jefferson, slide number seven for information. This is an indication of those funds that the department uh, made an application for rollover into the uh, new financial year. However, there are still engagements with Treasury about uh, year-end closures, uh, as more especially on the COVID-306 uh, million, to see how these funds would be allocated uh, between the two financial years. This is a process that will unfold during the adjustment uh, process through National uh, Treasury. I must also indicate, Treasury, just to uh, summarize that the department is currently busy with National Treasury on the special budget adjustment, and there will be some changes to this budget Although we don't anticipate fundamental changes uh, to what uh, the APP is saying, however, there will be uh, some adjustments. I'll hand over to my colleague through your permission, DJ. Good afternoon, honorable members. As from um, slide 48, um, going to the next slide, as to slide 49, we are just giving a uh, an indication that the impact of the on the budget that the COVID-19 intervention should have on the 2020-21 um, annual performance plan. Um, it in the space of the regional bulk infrastructure grant projects, um, as as presented to your good selves before, would ha there would be an impact on the performance, um, especially those um, for projects from which we will actually then take some of the budget to actually ensure that we can implement the COVID interventions. Slide 50 gives an indication in terms of um, the funding that the department is actually obtaining to ensure that we can have a response package for the COVID-19. We have t we are targeting 291 million. Um, as per the um, as per the fiscal response package, and this will be availed through the travelling activities of the department that is curtailed quite significantly, non co activities, advertising, and and etc. And um, this will actually be attained also through the uh, through the compensation of employee employees, which we're actually targeting to actually achieve the 236 savings. But from the goods and services, we will have the 54 million savings from that point. On the next slide 51, we are uh, uh, um, actually displaying the 138 million to date that has been secured from the compensation of employees reproductization. But in slide 52, gives the 54 million that was obtained through the reproductization of our goods and services budget. On the slide 53, we give the indication in terms of the 306 million that was um, spent to date or are being spent to date as from 23 March when the com command center was established. We have managed to this day to serve 158 municipalities with water tanks and 196 megaliters or million liters of water has been delivered up until the 3rd of May, of which we can work out an average of 8.3 million liters per day. The, go the route forward is that uh, we are uh, want we want to continue with the supply of tanker service in the interim, and then also to implement the tanker dependency 
reduction strategy because to bring down the operating costs. And the source development is the biggest component of this reduction strategy is to ensure that we have sources that we can get water from directly without carting. And then also eventually to have a transferable functional asset to be transferred to Water Service Authority. Slide 54 gives you uh, just a breakdown in terms of the cost for the various activities planned. And then on, on slide 55, which is the second last slide, it just uh, gives the indication, uh, honorable members, that uh, the, the WISIC, the Water Service Infrastructure Grant, we will have a 524 reprioritization, and from the regional bulk, we are targeting a 200 million. Thank you very much. Chairperson, we presented to you our strategic plan. We also presented to you our annual performance plan, and we have presented to you our COVID-19 response plan. I'm now going to hand over to the Deputy Minister to hand over to you. Your Excellency, Comrade Coaches, thank you very much Go. from our side. That's, that's our report, uh, Chairperson. We'll, we are sending it back to you for your guidance and engagement. Uh, thank you very much for the, for the presentation, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister and, and, and your team. I'm now going to hand over to the chairperson of the portfolio committee to facilitate that part where we engage with uh, with the presentations. Over to you, uh, chairperson of the portfolio committee. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Dodobu and the department for the presentation. Um, Honorable members, that was the presentation of the strategic plan APP and the response on the COVID-19 by the by department. <clears throat> I'm now going to ask the honorable members to engage with the report and uh, I'll start with um, honorable A.K. Chair, thanks. Can I come? Thanks, Chair. Can I come later? Sort of for okay. inconvenience, Chair. Okay. Uh, on Honorable Sikhoi. Person, thank you. Honorable Sakai, your network is very poor. I can't hear. You can't hear me. Chair, I was saying, uh, yes, can I come yes. later? You? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, I can. <clears throat> Thank you. Honorable Basson. Uh, Chairperson, I am really concerned about um, the three million people that don't have reliable drinking water. Um, we we have picked up uh, a chairperson. Uh, um, even the 17,000 tanks under COVID-19 that's been distributed of the 17,000, yeah, distributed in. Um, the complaints from communities are that those tanks were filled once, never filled again. And, and we sit with situations that in some areas we don't even have tanks. So that even increased the, the biggest problem under COVID-19. And I am really concerned on how the department is dealing uh, with the matter, entrusting uh, municipalities that in the past have, have not serviced the community to deal with this in, in a crisis. And I need to know from the department how they're going to deal with this matter. Uh, we cannot leave our communities out there vulnerable um, when the department um, has spent the money, but on the ground people don't have water. And and cheapers, and also we, we find that um, uh, um, 
there is uh, people now having water than five years ago. And, and that's not because of um, the growing population. It's because of infrastructure collapsing. And uh, we need to, to, to get a make. Uh, you can spend this money are not dealing with the daily issues of people in the communities. It's not helping us uh, delivering water uh, to our communities. That also is the same situation with sanitation. But for now, I just want to deal with the water. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Basson. Uh, we, uh, yeah, NCOP. Honorable Nita. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, my first is on the yes, Chair. Mine is on the issue of water under context, Chair. The presenter is saying, Chair, there are fifty six percent of water treatment works and forty four that are in poor or critical state, Chair. Uh, I want to take up share that matter because we are in a state of uh, dealing with the coronavirus. And now when you have that kind of a question, of a statement share, you need a department later on to come back and tell you exactly what are they going to do to deal with that situation because the water is the critical source that we need as of now. To chair, there is a breakdown that they've given us uh, where they, they identify projects per province. I think we highly appreciate that, chair, but it would be proper if they can break it down, not necessarily now, uh, in terms of reason where exactly are those projects and also in terms of uh, finances are located for such projects they be more specific if they are saying eastern cape in this particular region they also attach the amount so that we are able to do our oversight as as, as, as leadership of the parliament thank you thank you very much uh, honorable shader Thank you, Chair. Th thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, I think in terms of the... Um, firstly, I think in terms of, of the reliable water supply issue, uh, I, it, it, is a, it is a concern, Chair, um, especially in terms of... <coughs> especially in terms of... Chair, can I come back? <laughs> okay. Okay, Honorable Mutato. Honorable Mutato. Honorable Seleku. Seleku or Seleka. No, I'm Can not. You uh, I'm not here. Who's that? Mutato. Yeah, I'm Mutato. I'm, uh, I, I don't have a question for now, sir. Okay. Sele Honorable Seleku. Good afternoon, Chair. How are you? I'm fine, and how are you? I'm well, then. Uh, Chair, I've just heard that the, CA, the CFO is acting, and the last time the, the department appeared before the select committee of COCTA, uh, they were still acting uh, C, CFO. So I, and I see in terms of their programs, one, two, three, and four, there seems to be under, under expenditure when it comes to the filling of vacancies. 
I would just love the department just to allow, elaborate to the committee in terms of why is it so difficult for the department to fill positions? Because if we don't have stability within the ministry, then the issues of irregular, you know, wasteful and fruit, fruitless expenditure will still continue. Uh, that would be just the question for now on this round, Chair. Thanks. Chair, can I come in again? Okay, Honorable Chair. Yeah, Chair, sorry about that. Uh, I had to cough. Uh, but Chair, as I was saying that, um, obviously, reliable water supply is a concern. And it's also a concern, especially now during COVID-19. <clears throat> uh, and we understand that uh, plans are un underway around uh, ensuring that there's water availability. But just in terms of, of, I understand the minister is in a meeting at the moment, but in terms of water supplies, it relates to schools. Seeing that the schools are, are likely to open uh, on the 1st of June, if we can get some kind of progress around that. Um, Secondly, Chair, um, in terms of the strike plan, uh, there was an in indication around diversifying <clears throat> the water resource mix. And one of the aspects that has been looked at is the desalination, uh, where over the MTF, uh, there's a move from 0.5% to 3%. Um, maybe if, if the department can give us an indication, especially in terms of the costs around, around uh, desalination, Chair, um, I haven't heard anything in this presentation about the Yani Bulk Water Project. I'm not sure if, if if it was covered or if I missed it. But if, if we can get uh, some kind of uh, progress, or, or what is the status of, of the of the Giani Bulk Water Project? Um, furthermore, with the <clears throat> the the Mogolo and Crocodile Water Augmentation Project, uh, Chair, uh, if if we can also be informed around at what stage is the project, because I understand that it was at some point at an EIA stage. I'm not sure if it's still at that stage, but also what is the budget allocation to the, the Mogolo and Crocodile Water Augmentation Project? Um, yeah, Chair, let, let me leave my questions there. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Shaita. Um, Honor Honorable Mokotu. Honorable Mokotu. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my first question is that is the internal audit committee in the 2020 to 2021 financial budget process capacitated so as to monitor ongoing supply chain management and procurement transgression transgressions in the department. And then my other question is directed to program four, under water sector regulation. The budget for 2020 financial year has decreased, yet this is one of the most critical program in the water sector with serious crisis of poor regulation of our river systems and water waste treatment systems. Why has the department not allocated this program a larger budget so as to employ more water compliance monitors? And then another question is uh, directed to program one. Why does the department want to keep the vacancy rate to 10% or less instead of making sure that all the vacant posts are filled? especially those with scarce skills. And another question is, how is the department going to ensure that the planned measures to combat the 3% water deficit, which may occur in 2040, are implemented effectively and are successful? Another question, and you'll tell me when to stop, uh, Chair. Another question? That should be your last, actually. Okay, thank you. Um, why is the budget for goods and services lower than the budget 
for compensation of employees. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Mufutu. Honorable Mvana. Honorable Mvana. Okay, Honorable Honorable Powell. Pache, um, afternoon, Deputy uh, Minister, DG, uh, and colleagues. Uh, just to reiterate a question already asked about the acting positions, I remain deeply uh, concerned at the number of senior executives in the department that are acting. Um, we know from independent reports presented to the committee that uh, acting executives, not to take anything away from their individual integrity, but they lack the teeth and the authority to take um, difficult decisions, sometimes decisions that fly in the face of, of, of political imperatives. So, Deputy Minister, um, I'd like for you to please provide us with some responses around when the uh, CEO who uh, who is currently acting, will, that position will be filled. The the CFO that's currently acting, when that will be filled, then um, the minister went to great lengths. Uh, I think it was late last year and and early this year to do sort of a lot of PR, um, a big launch of this 900 billion rand water master plan. I did ask um, a question in Parliament that Honourable uh, Chueti answered to say that just because we don't have money doesn't mean we, we don't need plans, and, and I quote verbatim. Um, anyway, this year's budget is about 17 billion, so it's going to take us 52 years to roll out the 900 billion rand uh, water services master plan. Can we just get clarity on how objectives of this year's budget fit into the broader picture of the water plan that was announced by the minister and whether or not we are still on track in terms of fund uh, raising funds against that plan. Just give us a bit of sort of layman's level clarity on that, please. Um, and then I was doing some other work earlier this week and, and, and came across the presentation from COG to, uh, and SELGA and Treasury to our committee in October last year, where we interrogated the debt that municipalities uh, owe water boards. Um, and, and at that point in time, the figure stood at over 14 billion rand that, that was outstanding to water boards and the water trading entities. Can the department please give us a little overview of what their plans are in this upcoming financial year, this current financial year to recoup uh, that debt? Because it looks, and, and Deputy Minister Mushlobo said it before, it's a situation similar to ESCOM that's, that's looming in this department if we don't have robust plans. So I would expect that, 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 that the, the, the department has got some plans that should be in this budget. Can we please have that? Um, and I also saw in the Stats SA presentation that only 40.9% uh, of South Africans pay for water. So I understand that this overlaps with COGTA, but... It's a, it's a serious crisis when less than 50% of your population are paying for such a scarce resource. So what are the department's plans uh, to ensure financial sustainability going forward? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Powell. Uh, Honorable Sushwai. Thank you, Chairperson. Good afternoon uh, to the DG and the team and my colleagues. Firstly, Chair, just to appreciate the, the presentation. Also, the opening of the presentation that has made a very clear sort of analysis. How I wish that a, that content of that sort of analysis could also be, could sink down to all the officials of the department so that the presentation of the APPs and the finance uh, this financial year um, could be implemented as such on the basis of this sort of 
uh, Chaperson, there's a um, in the in the the, the 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 presentation that talks about three million households that do not have a reliable drinking water. Fourteen comma one. It, it, it's it's nice to see it, but the issue is it's so generalized. Remember, the, the South Africa is composed of two sectors, which is the urban and the rural. One would like to hear how much that goes to rural, so that we understand if we are also only looking to urban areas alone. Because we do have a responsibility of redress. We can't just continue without looking back on how do we rectify the damage that has been there, more especially from rural areas. I would like to hear how much uh, that goes to, to that communities. The second one, Chair, is the, the large portion of water is distributed to agriculture. We, we do have an interest. What is this agriculture? Perhaps a package of this agriculture, because in there you need to make sure that is there a provision? Is there a slice that goes to the small farmers? Because that's the category that we know it is always left out in terms of the distribution of resources. The the valley has got a huge uh, chunk of money in Pongona. I am interested to know if the whole um, categorization of money to these areas, is there no unaccounted water? Is there no unaccounted water? I raise the issue because I think yeah, since we have been getting these presentations, we were told about some of the municipalities that are not, are not paying. It's important that we should know a certain percentage, even if it could be an estimation, so that you are able to work on that towards a correction. The, the, we hope that uh, DG at another time, you'll be able to present to us because the department has got a huge role players, which I would imagine that that is why it's not easy for the department to do monitoring towards efficiency and effective effectiveness. We have got municipalities, the district also have got a responsibility on water, and we have got uh, the entities uh, where you send some grant and you send to municipalities and you, you seem to be not having a clear tool, a clear tool to monitor all those role players. And at the same time, you are the one who is seen as responsible in terms of water provision. So I would like to know how are you going to deal with this? Because we, we, have, we have seen that experience that you send grants, more especially in the wastewater systems above all and you are not getting the real accountability of the money. What is your strategy in this uh, financial year? Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Sikwai. Honorable Zamdela, you, you'll, uh, you'll assist me if I have not pronounced it correctly. Honorable Zamdela. It's Zanda Mela. Oh, Zam Zanda Mela. I'm sorry, um, yeah. honorable member. No, thanks, yes, Chair. You're welcome. Yes. Okay. No, in the in the on a, in the in the in the in the in the presentation, uh, the 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 2019 2020 APP the annual performance plan and the projects uh, uh, at large uh, we, we we have for it to 2020 now is it possible that maybe we can get the breakdown from the projects done versus the projects that are not done by the department 
uh, considering the COVID-19 uh, 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 disruptions uh, in some of these pro uh, projects. And then the, my second question, it's uh, 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 well, the, the, the basic education minister has uh, just announced that the schools must go back, uh, are reopening on the first. So my question to the department, it's uh, uh, most of the schools, especially in Pumalanga, in areas like uh, Dr. Jess, Chembisile, Bush Park Ridge. Uh, come again. You, can you hear me, Chair? Well, I was saying in, in those uh, schools, in those areas, Dr. Jess, Tembisile, and Bush Parties, and all, and all the rural areas around uh, Bumalang, most of the schools, there's no sanitation, there's no water there. And uh, in the presentation, you, you, you spoke about uh, that you'll be receiving about two hundred plus minus 260 million, and nothing was said for what is the plan of the department with regard to those schools since they, they, are, they, are, they are reopening on the first. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member um, Zam, Zam, Zamdela. Uh, can uh, Honorable Mola? Honorable Mola? Honorable Teke? The hand. Chair, thanks very much. Just one question, Chair. Um, last year, in our budget votes, we raised the issue of uh, transformation and capacity of um, the internal construction uh, unit within the department. Um, but I think I've missed a point where the department is talking to it so that they can be able to empower local municipalities and provinces to implement the um, a mega project. Thanks, Chair. That's the only question. Honorable Mosala. My first question, I'm going to direct it to the to the department. DG, in your APP, some baseline targets are identified for indicators. And in most instances, there's no baseline target. Is this not a weakness in your department whereby they set the targets too high without a baseline and which then after causes the department not to achieve the targets for the, for, for the particular year? How does the department identify its target without considering a baseline target? Are these targets uh, thumbs up? My second question is with regards to the 5% of the agricultural water that is, is used by the black farmers. This simply means that the government is focusing on commercial farmers more than the small holder farmers, which, is the, which, which in this case is the black uh, emerging farmers. If the government was prioritizing these smallholder farmers during COVID-19, they were going to play an important role to feed the population that have migrated back to rural areas due to the job losses. Why is this taking too long to transform? What is the obstacles? Number uh, three, we note the department for its initiative in assisting the state with COVID-19 interventions. But we still need to understand why the department uses such reactionary to crisis managing the water and sanitation sector in the country. What are your long-term plans in holding the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs accountable for disaster management funding and initiative? Will the department utilize the district development model 
to evaluate peer performance and hold each one accountable for weaknesses which result within their mandate of work. Um, the other one is while the, while the department has in this financial year taken into cognizance the expenditure and would be used from this year's budget for the COVID-19 intervention, what measures are taken to ensure that accruals and payables are, and overdraft amounts owing are not neglected, as this will once again place the department at further risk financially. The last one, the portfolio com committee analyzed and received briefings by the Department of Water and Sanitation on its 2019-23 quarterly report, which reflects expenditure of 2019-20 budget up until 31st December 2019. The presentation noted that for the third quarterly report of 2019-20, the department has spent has spent 9.7 billion or 59% of its budget of this amount what was the percentage what was the percentage amount spent on rolling accruals and payables and your overdraft amount and how will this impact your annual performance performance indicators and targets thank you um honorable seki Honorable Tseki. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, thank you very much. She I get to be aware of a reaso bola gata by a data. Data is soon to be a challenge. <laughs> if your team can work on that note. We agree data must fall. Nagi <laughs> <laughs> like a hot spot, so uh, <laughs> if they ignore hot spot, then it's a problem. Chair, the COVID 19, let's appreciate the intervention. I think the department is one of those departments that happened to respond quickly from the call of the president, which we need to appreciate. But I see two figures there on the COVID-19. The 291, which is divided into two, uh, 54 million for goods and services, and 234 for employee salary. Yes, yes. I find that those differences are too huge. Again, as you go down, there's another 600, and 600 million. That is for COVID-19 as well. Now, I'm asking myself, these two figures, are they not one COVID-19 that you are dealing with? Because the second one, that 600 million, explained the issue of the tankers and everything. What is that 291 million for? if it's going to be budgeted under COVID-19. And I also find it that if you would have employees being paid 234 and goods and services only for 34 million, the equation doesn't uh, fall well there, Chair. The other issue, Chair, is about this issue of water for agriculture that majority of the water is still used by agriculture. I think we should be understood correctly there because the issue is not about moving the percentage of water from agriculture to something else. But I think it's about in transformation. Of course, even in future, water will be used in the majority for agriculture because our livelihood depends on agriculture. But what is important is that it should be for the people of South Africa, not for certain individuals. That's why the issue of transformation comes very strong on it. I hope we all understand it, or I understand it in the right way. 
There's an issue here, Chair, which I think maybe this one is by the way. When we deal with uh, mega housing projects or these catalytic projects, one of the things that we are saying they have run the test of time in terms of uh, metrics or metrics readiness or readiness metric. When the project is ready, it also talks about connectivity of regulation of water. Now, I know that is done by municipality. I'm not sure how we can do it, Chair, so that when the department plans, they are also linking with municipality or the report can come from the housing part to say all these project readiness metric means a connection of houses as well. Last two, Chair, South, State South Africa has given us a caution. I think on about three provinces, if not four. In the plan, I might not be seeing it. Uh, can we hear it from the department? What is their plan? I think Limpopo was topping the list. And then secondly, I think it was... Uh, Northwest and, uh, and Eastern Cape around there. But uh, I think uh, State South Africa has given us that, that kind of warning or information. The last one, Chair, is about transgressors. These people that are transgressing, I think we discussed them last time. In particular, it would be farmers, uh, it will, not farmers, sorry, industries it will be more industries and uh, it may be ourselves as communities you remember when we were doing our site visit we were also told about the wrongs that are done by communities where they are throwing in uh, things like the uh, mataloho they throw engines in these uh, pipelines and they block those are transgressors, regardless of the level. I, I've not picked it up in terms of how are we going to deal with transgressors. Because we are saying from another angle, if you look at what mining is do, done, has done, you could classify that as one of the transgressions. But, of course, we have compromised on that. But I know the department have said now, moving forward, the miners will be the mining companies will be responsible to cleaning off our water when they leave those uh, mines. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Zeki. Honorable Matika. Honorable Matika. Honorable Mwezi. Honorable Mashiach. Honorable Mashiach. Um, I think the list that I'm having, it's uh, finished. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, can I give you a platform? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, let me... Uh, even before the person, one question, please. Sorry for that. Who's that? It's Nita Chair. Who's that? Nita, please. Nita. Nita. Okay. Yes. Okay. You are coming yeah, for the second time. Sorry, Chair. I forgot about okay. one critical question. The, Chair, okay. the issue of safety of water. You know, people in rural areas, they are drilling water from the borehole. Now that you are in an environment with a coronavirus, what I would like to know from the department, what is it that they are doing to ensure that that water that is being drilled by the community 
uh, for the benefit of drinking and also washing, it is a safe water, is not affected by coronavirus. Okay. Because sometimes you may just think hypothetically that it may happen because the deceased people that are, are down there, they can contaminate water. If I'm right, they'll correct me. If I'm wrong, Chair, they'll correct me if that is not possible. If it is possible, what is it that they are doing to make sure that is not happening? The water is not contaminated with coronavirus. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Z uh, Rita. Uh, Honorable uh, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Court Chair. Uh, let me express my appreciation to the department for the presentation. I may as well say, Chair, that last year, at this time when we were dealing with the same uh, subject matter, I was extremely worried about the state of, of the department. But today, just listening to what the department is saying, I'm quite comfortable and confident that the department is doing quite well to ameliorate the situation. I'm quite satisfied that there is at least progress. And what is important is that the department has adopted a master plan which is a vision for the future which identifies what are the problems and the current realities where we are and what is it that we need to do as a country to address the issues of of water and that inspires confidence but just linked with that point my 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 question to both the the deputy minister and the dg is that what is it that they are doing to ensure that the, the same master plan is, is, is proliferated, is shared, is known, is, is communicated to, to, to the people at large so that the people must know what is it that we do in terms of, or what are our plans in terms of attending to the issues of uh, water and sanitation. For me, it's important, and I, I, I want the department to share with us what are their intentions to roll out communication to ensure that at the end of the day, the people understand that. The, the second question, I think Honorable Nzeki raised it, because when we received the reports of the, of the, from the Statistics South Africa and, and, and the DPME, they did identify which provinces are, are, are quite problematic, which need attention, and one of those is, is, is Limpopo, and the other one, if I remember, is Northwest and, and Pumalanga. Uh, for me, it is quite important for for, for the department to target this, 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 these provinces. And they need to share with us what are their plans, what, what, do, what are their budget for this financial year to ensure that they, they, they target the, the same provinces that have been identified as those that lack uh, the necessary facilities. With that, Chair, I think, I'm, as I indicated, I'm, I'm quite okay and... I'm, I'm, I'm very much impressed because that clearly shows that within a year, uh, the, the team, both political and administrative, is turning the tide and making sure that they put up systems and structures in place to ensure that at the end of the day, we continue to provide uh, quality water to our people. And, and that, for me, inspires confidence. Thank you very much. Chair. I'm told there is Honorable Kony. Honorable Kony. Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. I, I also want to appreciate uh, the work of the department because I'm sure everybody would agree with me that they are doing their best, especially under the conditions we find ourselves in. Uh, one or two points I wanted to find out from the department. Do they consult uh, with the municipalities in terms of their master plan, or is their master plan being informed by the master plans of municipalities? Also on their plans, we know that 
and we appreciate that many South Africans have gained, households have gained improved access to basic services over the past decade. And the growth in the number of households, which grew faster than the population, means that there are more households to provide with basic services in clean water and improved sanitation. This was further emphasized by the report of the Statistician General now the other day that indicated that between 2002 to 2018, the South African <coughs> population growth averaged at 25%, whilst household growth for the same period was at 49%. Now, I want the department to demonstrate whether if during the drafting of their strategic plan, do they engage with such data or ensure that their plans respond to their population needs and demands, which is ever evolving. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honorable Connie. Um, just to add questions, uh, DGN and, and DM, when you do a strategic plan and APP, you, you even um, made assessment of your structure. I just want to check whether have you uh, developed the structure that will be able to uh, assist you to implement the program that you you you, you said uh, you're going to implement through the APP and strategic plan. And and um, because as you want to recover, you you've got the turnaround strategy and recovery uh, recovery plan for your finances. Uh, you need human capital to do that. I just want to check uh, that one. The, the second issue is on the distribution of water. Um, when we visited Limpopo, we have found that 80% um, of water is goes to agriculture and 19% um, to the domestic use and 1% to the industries. So this is abnormal. So can we get co uh, a department to work on that? Uh, and even if you are at 55 56 now at national, but in other provinces, the situation is in dire need. So we have to look at how you transform this, this, this uh, <clears throat> area, particularly Limpopo that we have visited. The, 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 the second, the third question, it's on, on the, on the COVID-19, um, that, as we are giving people tanker, tankers and and trucks, so and 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 I assume at some point they are going to be withdrawn. Do we have a plan in place that as we draw those trucks, uh, people will continue getting water because the 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 intervention should not should not leave when you when 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 the intervention goes away uh, i think it will be important to to just to guarantee get the guarantee from department that the inter the, this intervention that we are making would our people would continue to benefit out of it even after the intervention of of of, of government <clears throat> and we want to appreciate the work that has been done so far it is is pleasing dg and your and dm thank you very much you can respond to questions well uh, thank you very much uh, uh, co-chairs and uh, honorable members i will deal with some issues and then the dg and the team will deal with some of the issues um let's just convey our um, gratitude to chairperson to the members of the committee for the words of encouragement. But uh, we know that these words doesn't mean that we have arrived or should we rest on our laurels. But uh, more work still needs to be done. But these words are encouraging, including the work we have done in terms of um, lending a hand and responding to the president's call that we need to do whatever it takes to ensure that um, 
one of the preventative measures or containing of the pandemic COVID-19 was to deal with the question of water and sanitation. I will deal with certain questions uh, broadly, Chair, without going to, to certain honorable members because they are questions that are interlinked. One of the questions that is interlinked are mostly the question that um, the DG gave the context in which this strategic plan and the APP are foregrounded. And Chairperson, we want to reconfirm that this strategic plan and the APP are foregrounded one in respect to a, our national development plan, which is our lot star as a country. We've agreed on that particular lot star. And uh, in the main, the response of the department in terms of that particular lot star is with respect to what is uh, encapsulated in the National Water and Sanitation Master Plan. That's why you could see uh, when we look at in terms of access to services that um, there are still 3 million, not household comrades, it's 3 million South Africans who don't have access to water. And uh, uh, colleagues are very clear that these numbers are the numbers that you could see that were also indicated by States SA when they did their presentation. When it comes to sanitation, these numbers of 14.1 million South Africans also, in terms of our population, that is more than 58 million. These are the ones that don't have decent sanitation. Uh, in, and that they are existing in the main. Honorable Dodov, we are correct. These are some of these numbers. When you look at States SA, most of the provinces that are actually rural provinces, whether is it Eastern Cape, whether is it uh, Limpompo, some provinces that had TPV state like Yompumalanga, you also have your Northwest, you have KwaZulu Natal. And your excellencies, you'll remember that the apartheid regime deliberately decided in order to actually roll out infrastructure in those particular communities. That's why even water, the policies of the time, water had to be brought into economic hubs like Johannesburg or Houding, where already we have about 14 rivers, or four, I mean 14, 14 uh, water schemes that are just part of the integrated Val river system that actually has to keep the economy up because those are the decisions that you have to do. And you had water to be transferred uh, from that particular distance. Equally, Mamsman, these issues that Mamsman try and yourself and others are raising, even when it came to the question of the water sector, the sectors that uses water, in the main, it was a policy decision at the time to support irrigation. That's why you don't have, you, you can see even today in terms of empirical evidence that agriculture was using more than 60% of the available water in terms of the system. Well, now the numbers are coming to a little bit down to around 58%, uh, which is still a, a bigger percentage. How does the plan respond? And then there is an issue that, in terms of our plan, we are indicating that if certain things are not being done, we are running a risk of having a deficit in terms of water security by the year 2040. And that deficit is looked at at around 3%. What is this plan trying to demonstrate, Chair? One of the things that is being demonstrated in the plan is that there are certain initiatives on the basis of scenario planning or reconciliation studies that the department, we need to embark as a country to guarantee the assurance of supply and reliability. That's why the figure, honorable person, of about 900 billion, it includes securing the water availability for beyond 2040, just those 10 projects that must be done to give us assurance 
We need about 126 billion of that amount. It's not that it is thumbs up. Well, the money that you could see that the department is providing is not adequate. But you will know, honorable members, that most of the time these major infrastructure projects, the state has always been in a position to try to mobilize private sector funding. And in the main, the economic sector users are the ones that nobody must actually fund the full cost. That's why when you look at the issue of the establishment of the trans uh, Tunnel Authority as an SPV, was to be able to raise this particular amount so that you can be able to pay. Then the state has a responsibility just to pay for the social component. In other words, for the reserve, for the human consumption, because it's non-negotiable. That's why when our president says to us, I'm actually mobilizing about 500 billion, and we need more than 500 billion, probably 1 trillion. The infrastructure is going to become the bedrock. It's going to become the catalyst and enabler for the rejuvenation of this particular economy. There is this money that is required out of the 900 billion for catering for the new growth and the new needs. Honorable person, the other components for that particular money is to deal with the current assets. Our own current, remember the water assets are divided into two. There is a bulk infrastructure where the departments start from the source with the water boards. There are these dams, there is a treatment uh, facility, then there's a network. And then the municipal infrastructure where you deal with the distribution uh, connections, which will then start from the reservoirs to internal distribution and others. We have neglected as a country the issues of investment in terms of asset management. That's why it's coming on billions and billions of rent. Just make one example. The 9.9 .9 billion rent that is actually due to non-revenue what is because of an infrastructure failure. And if that infrastructure is not refurbished, is not renewed, you'll have problem. The same amount you look at of 900 billion, let's look at a province like Limpom. Limpom for this government has delivered some dams after the Democrats. One of the biggest dams there that is beautiful is the Wolf Dam. For you to be able to draw water into those particular communities, because the issue now is reticulation and the bulk that must be given there. These are some of these examples, but I will not go into detail there, but it's an important matter that I think we are raising in terms of assurance of supply. Your Excellencies, on the question of water allocation or distribution, we must know that if these sectors of the economy, whether industrial, whether mining, whether agriculture, whether domestic, including international obligations share and ecological uh, uh, a reserve that you must provide. If Chairperson, we don't actually ensure that there is no particular economic sector that is actually given more water than other uh, sectors, you'll have a problem. Therefore, members, we are correct to say this imbalance is not actually a uh, desirable. But for you to actually get agriculture to be able to come to the target you are setting in the National Water and Sanitation Master Plan, you have to understand that they need to be prepared. There has to be a transition period for them to be able to start to use disruptive technologies so that they can be able to reduce that particular amount. Equally, at the very same time, you then you implement your water conservation and demand management measures Probably from a regulatory point of view, we must be probably um, introducing incentives for those people who are actually saving water or using less water, but producing more. That's one issue that I think around water allocation from the broader perspective, we are correct. If you look at the plan the DG has presented, we are very serious to say the only water available in our country is what we call it the water mix. 
because surface water will not be available all the time because you either have to do interbasin transfers or intercatchment transfers, or you will need to draw water from other countries, whether from DRC, more water from Lesotho and others. That's why the issue of desalination, you could see that desalination is going to increase. And the DG is correct to say desalination every time when the technology was introduced is just a general phenomenon for technology. It comes at a higher price. The more there is an uptake, the prices are coming down. But the issues of the input cost, in the main, it was the question of power, which is electricity from the grid. And then it was also the issues of the management of environmental impact, which is the disposal of the brine. And the, our view now is that uh, the coastal cities working with environmental affairs, mineral resources and energy, the more we bring uh, the energy mix, which is the use of gas, all those coastal cities, we could be in a position to start to use them. I know that there are certain of these ones that are, are available in Cape Town, in Guadalu Natal, that are being used, um, um, for an example, they are being used as an, a, a reserve or for emergency purposes. Then you have to commission the plant again when you start. If you look at groundwater, Groundwater is going to be the most important element in our mix, and you could see the number is going to increase. For rural communities right now, where there is no water at all, these communities have been able to live over time, and our groundwater studies report indicate that we can be able to drill more boreholes. The only issue we must be able to manage is that citizens must not think that groundwater is of inferior, uh, but it's what we could be able to do, and many communities are very happy that we are doing it. There is a risk with groundwater right now. The more the population grows, the more we don't deal with the question of sanitation in those other communities. There is a possibility of contamination. And the other colleagues are correct when they are saying groundwater, some people who might have problems with the uh, pollutants, especially E. coli, and everywhere we have put the, the storage facilities and we use them um, for homes. We have directed municipalities supported by our people in the department that that water can't just be abstracted, put in the storage facilities without treatment. That's why we said water testing must become the most important element and those test results must be made available in the website, whatever kind of a methodology. So that communities, they know that they are drinking water that is clean. In the main, as I was saying, people are having some views, there's new issues of the possibility of the availability of the remnants of the coronavirus uh, RNA in water. Uh, we have some reports around Netherlands, around Australia, you can be able that how people are handling these particular issues, especially even on people that have passed on when they get to be buried. Uh, the Water Research Commission is working very hard on these particular issues. But in the meantime, there is nothing that suggests that the RNA component from the coronavirus will be able to live in water beyond that one because it's no longer going to be able to replicate. But all the water either is a in the treatment works, whether in the borehole, the question of disinfections is an important issue that I thought we should be able to, to, to raise. Then the reuse, especially the issues around wastewater. Remember, most of these municipalities, like in Kauteng in Northwest, like in Northwest Comrade Chair, in Artis, we are drinking water that we've used before. In, in Pretoria, in Swane, it's used water before. Therefore, the question of uh, reuse and the treatment, uh, I thought we should be able to give that particular comfort. The water master plan, as indicated in the documentation, is going to be reviewed on an ongoing basis. It's a living document. It must be agile and it must be responsive to the current conditions. This document was widely consulted with the various experts, industries, 
role players, including local government. Our expectation is that each province and each district as present directed us to work in the district development model, they must develop their own district and their own provincial specific provincial water and sanitation master plan, but aligned to the national plan because there has to be understanding that we are one unitary state. Therefore, the plans must be able to take into that uh, differentiation. I think the issues of funds, we've addressed them. Leadership, there is an issue still on water allocation. We must admit that water to support historically disadvantaged individuals, especially farmers, we have not done well if you look at the percentage. There was a time when there was a water allocation reform program, and that particular program was not actually a a, a pushed to what we have wanted. The minister has directed that the transformation in the water sector is non-negotiable. Therefore, we are going to be putting more water available to support emerging farmers. If you look at the plan and the presentation, we are not going to support them in isolation. We are going to ensure that every time there is a, there is a land restitution or land reform program, those people, they are able to be given water because they need to be able to do that. Uh, it must be available because some of the people used to transfer the licenses. You get the land and the water right is not with you. That issue of water transformation or water allocation is back. But then there's a technical work that must happen, which is included in the plan. There must be the issues of verification and validation. In other words, do we have water in this particular catchment? If we don't have this water on this particular catchment, then we can be able to force people to go through the compulsory licensing. But water transformation is an important matter. Also, transformation is not about giving only historically disadvantaged farmers. It's also to be able to allow water to be used for multi-purpose, for recreational purposes, as an example, for agriculture, including issues of culture, because there are people who are using water and access to our dams for cultural purposes. Mums try the analysis that we are saying that we need to cascade to officials. We are taking your guidance so that all the officials, we must be able to have many voices, but have one message from the department in terms of what we are doing and what we are not doing. On the question of the of uh, municipal debt, uh, Chair, we have raised it, and Honorable Powell, we have raised it. We have said and want to reconfirm that uh, many municipalities are struggling, and you could see when we're receiving the reports from the water boards, they are all complaining. We have tried to engage with the water boards to support them with the to actually municipalities to keep their promises. But the reality is that municipalities are poor. And that's why we're working together now in a joint task team with Cocta and Salka, of which is a report that we owe you so that we can be able to come back and be able to deal with this particular problem. Because if we don't actually have this problem, we will have the same situation that um, was experienced by ESCOM. In certain instances, Chair, we are not going to run away after using intergovernmental relations framework in terms of conflict or disputes. In certain instances, when plans are agreed and people don't respect their plans or honor their commitments, we will be left with no option. A number of these municipalities or entities are being taken to court. In as much as it is not desirable, but sometimes to enforce an agreement or a contract. That's what I, uh, we are actually uh, 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 going to do. The last issue is around the, what uh, Honorable Zeke has raised, around the issues of um, 
vandalization, the issues of corruption, and so forth that are being raised, including issues of pollution. We are trying to strengthen our capability as a department, one, to ensure that we enforce the regulation, especially those people who pollute. They must be able to pay. And that's why the anti-pollution task team of the minister is already working, and many directives have been issued and we've gone to court. But for us to have successful prosecution, we must be in a position to train some of the officials in court so that they can be able to process these particular issues. We're also saying that technology must be used to safeguard the infrastructure because there's a lot of issues that vandalization of the main holes, the vandalization of the valves, the networks by other people that have interest uh, to disrupt some of these particular projects, including the issues of collusion by officials. That's why when you look at the plan under administration, our zero tolerance to corruption and also our enforcement of the internal audit capacity so that we can be able to do an assessment. And the internal audit in the department has done a lot of investigation and we're very pleased and action is taken. I will stop there, Comrade Chair. I thought all those that are some of the issues that are linking to the broader plans, we do have that particular comfort and can confirm that um, with your support, with the right capacity and the right coordination with the sector, we could be able to achieve some of the targets we've set in the National Water Master Plan. We can allow the DG to hang in the risk that we have not dealt with. Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, the Deputy Minister has answered almost 70, if not 80 percent of the questions. I'm going to pick those that I think were not uh, covered by the, by the Deputy Minister. Let me start with uh, the, the question on tracking or tangering. Uh, which you have raised, and I think it was also raised by Honorable Basson. Uh, Chairperson, if you allow me uh, to respond to this question and maybe use the township slang in, in, in responding to it, tangering is the biggest money guzzler, if I may put it that way. In the township, they would refer to it as the biggest money chowing business or the biggest money chowing item in the business of provision of water to uh, to the to the communities now what we want to do and you would have noticed that uh, the acting ddg manas when he presented he touched on uh, exiting that approach at some point but we don't want to exit it recklessly. I think it's important that we plan our exit. For instance, we have uh, given an instruction to rent water to continue with the current water tendering until July because Treasury has given us a permission to use our operational budget for now because the other budget, the capital budget, they are not likely to approve it now. I think they are caught between the rock and the hard place right now, the treasury officials. Because they, they still have to approve the budget. And now they have got limitations in terms of adjusting the budget that has not been uh, uh, approved. So treasury officials have given us an instruction to continue with tankering. We do have the budget uh, to do that. And uh, I want to assure you, Chair, that we are not going to exit that uh, recklessly. Uh, we know there were concerns that were raised in Limpopo, in uh, KZN, uh, in the Northern Cape, for the department not to stop the tender uh, business. Uh, sorry. Some, someone can mute, please. Kalisa, 
Thank you, Chair. Colleagues are also muted me as well. Uh, Chairperson, I'm going to move to the next question, which is about the recovery of uh, the debt. Uh, this is a very difficult uh, part. Uh, in fact, here we're talking about the old debt. What we have been discussing with Salga, with Cogta, and with uh, National Treasury is that top slicing is allowed and it can be done. Remember, we put that proposal long time ago that maybe what we need to do here is to top slice the grants, top slice the budgets, but do it in such a way that it does not affect uh, service delivery. That's number one. And number two, if you are top slicing the budget or the grant to pay for water services, you also need to top slice the budget to pay for the municipal debt because municipalities are also owed by national government, by provincial governments. So what they are saying is that uh, what is good for the agenda is good for the, for the goose. So we have to make sure that uh, as we top slice the municipal budget, we also top slice the provincial budget, the national budget, to make sure that municipalities are paid what is owed to them. I think that's a fair proposal. And that proposal came from the president of Salga, who is uh, very passionate about this topic. I think we are getting closer to making that decision. I think we have moved, uh, we have convinced each other that uh, uh, top slicing may have to be done, but it has to be done in such a way that it doesn't uh, affect um, and service delivery, it also doesn't affect uh, the cash flow of uh, municipalities and the cash flows of provincial and national government departments. There was a question about uh, a proposal. DG, can you share with us uh, those projects that uh, have not started or the projects that have already started? There may be some of the projects were affected by COVID-19. That information, we can share it, Chair. We can make it available uh, to the committees. We have it. We will tell you which projects were affected. In fact, we started very slow. Uh, you recall that the country was on lockdown alert five, which meant that nothing was moving uh, in the month of March and also in the month of April because of, of the lockdown. lockdown. Construction was affected, uh, the whole construction sector. In fact, if you look at the impact of COVID-19 uh, on the economy, you would notice that uh, construction as a sector is the most affected sector. In fact, it has contracted by more than 6%. Uh, so that is why it's important for us to get back and uh, make sure that uh, we, we turn that sector around once uh, uh, the alert, uh, the lockdown has been uh, relaxed. Chairperson, there was also another question. Uh, I think the uh, that question was not answered on accruals and payables. I think we have reported uh, last week when we presented our annual report, Chair, that uh, we have reduced accruals and payables by almost 50%. When we started the year, we were at 2 billion rands, and uh, we ended the year, I think, uh, at about 1 billion. So we've reduced accruals and payables by 50%. And that is important because accruals uh, end up eating your budget. They diminish or they decrease the value of your budget. So you have to do something about accruals as quickly as possible. Uh, so we have reduced the accruals. And I think if a breakdown is needed, uh, we can present the same breakdown that we presented last week with all the figures on accruals, on overdraft, uh, both for the main account and for the uh, water trading entity account. We've got that information and uh, we can share it with Koliswa so that Koliswa can uh, distribute it to members of the, of the committees. On the, uh, the figures on... Um, COVID-19, 
Uh, I'm sure the CFO would want to come here, but I want to state that uh, you have two financial years. The first figure was for the previous financial year. Remember, we we started the lockdown in March before the end of the financial year. So we took money from the previous financial year to prioritize water tendering and water tanking. And that amount of 306 million rands come from the previous financial year. The new budget that we are listing here is going to come from the current financial year. But that amount has not been approved yet by Treasury. Treasury will need a little bit of time to do the adjustments. Remember, Treasury is not going to be able to do those adjustments without coming to you. They have to come to you uh, to change the budget. The president made an announcement, if you remember, of adjusting the budget by about 130 billion. And that adjustment cannot be achieved without coming to you because that figure, when I'm saying you, it means we must come to parliament, treasurer must come to parliament uh, through the processes, appropriations and, and all of that for that adjustment to happen. And that affects us as well. Uh, it affects this department, it affects COCTA, it affects a lot of uh, departments that are administering uh, capital grants and capital budgets. Honorable, thank you. the point about uh, uh, restructuring the department in order for us to support municipalities properly is a good one. And we have started with that process and minister has approved the new structure in the department. If you recall, the department um, did not have a branch called water services in the current structure. And the department didn't have a branch called water resource management in the current structure that we are using. So we felt it will assist us to restructure the department in order to respond directly to the mandate, because there are two pieces of legislation that inform the mandate of the organization. It is the National Water Act and it is the National Water Services Act. Now, for us to be able to respond directly and support municipalities, we need to have a branch that talks to water services. So we can implement the MUSA uh, recommendations. We can provide support to Yomati Bank, Yomfuleni and others and have the capacity to do that instead of relying all the time on implementing agencies or water boards. So I think that's the point that uh, I guess you are making there, that we will, have, we will now have a better way of providing hands-on support to municipalities. In the past, by the way, you had this kind of an arrangement in the department where you had the water services a component in the department focusing on providing support to water services authorities. The other question, Chair, that uh, I think the DM didn't touch adequately is, uh, in fact, we didn't answer this one, is the question about the baseline. That question about the baseline, why we don't have baselines in some areas and then we have baselines in other areas. Where we don't have baselines, we rely on benchmarks. We do a lot of benchmarking studies within the sector and the benchmark studies then inform the baseline. It's an acceptable, acceptable uh, way of setting targets. You don't have baselines, you must do benchmarking. Um, and then that's what we have done in all the areas where you don't have baselines. We didn't thumbs up those figures. We did the uh, benchmarking studies, which uh, we will be more than willing to, to share with you. Why are we not holding COCTA accountable for disasters? I think it's a fair question uh, that was raised there. And I think it's an important question, but it talks to the entire value chain of managing water, all of it, not just one aspect of the value chain. Uh, if we are expected to get into the reticulation space, which is what we are right now, if things were normal, the Department of Water and Sanitation should not be cutting water to households. The reason why we are cutting water to households is because things are not normal, because water cutting talks to reticulation of water to households, to families. 
But we intervened because uh, people look at the Minister of Water and Sanitation when there is no water at household level. But that particular exercise is an exercise that should have been done by COCTA, and COCTA should have activated the, um, the disaster fund to do all of that work. But we also need to be realistic and say that the more pressures that we are experiencing now are in the area of health. And I don't think that the disaster fund will be able to cover other areas. You would have noticed that there was a big shortfall in the area of health of about 4 billion rands. And I think that the disaster fund is prioritizing health. And this is not to say that water is not important. But during this period, uh, we had to prioritize health. And that disaster fund is not adequate to cover all the sectors. I don't think we should focus on uh, uh, blame proportioning between ourselves and COCTA. I think we are finding each other. In fact, in implementing this COVID-19 program, we worked with the DG of COCTA, the acting DG, Jamba Fosi. We worked with the CEO of MISA. We worked with the CEO of Rainwater. Uh, so we are, we are finding each other. And I think that we will be in a better position uh, to deliver water services going forward. In fact, the exit plan from the water tendering, uh, we are managing it together with Cocta, uh, Jefferson. Um, the 600 million, I think there was a question about the 600 million, I think the 600 million is new money, uh, which will fund the exit plan, uh, but it has not been approved yet by Treasury, I'm sure that will approve it. The 291, the goods and services and the compensation of employees, uh, that man, that 291 is coming from those two budget line items. It's coming from uh, goods and services. The goods and services budget is under pressure. That's why the, the money that we cut from that budget is small. Uh, the COE is not very much under pressure because we haven't filled most of the positions. The vacancy rate is 14%. We are very much ashamed, I must be honest with you, but we will, we have done the adverts, we've done the shortlisting for the CFO position, uh, the filling of the DG position, we'll leave that to the minister and the deputy minister uh, to decide. Uh, but the other positions, I think we will be able to fill them, Chair, quickly. You would have, you will recall that one of the DDGs, uh, DDG Funda Kumbi, who is now DTG Operations, was appointed in this organization as a CFO, uh, but a decision was, day, was made in the previous administration for DTG Funda Gubi to go to a different component. But she was the CFO in the department, and maybe Minister will make a call for DTG Funda Gubi to go back, or Minister will make a call that we shortlist, we continue with the shortlisting. But we had you, and we will make that decision, and we'll make it as quickly as possible. It's not nice to be acting in a position for a very long time. Uh, we think that uh, we will be able to meet uh, the 10% threshold before the end of the financial year. In fact, our target is not 10%. Our target is to make sure that we end the year at least with 5% vacancy rate. And that's one item that I'm managing and I'm managing uh, hands on. The mines, I think GM touched on it broadly but there is a policy that is likely uh, to be approved by cabinet in this current financial year that talks to uh, mine water. The current operators are arguing that it's not them who are polluting. The people who are polluting are those who have left the operations, the old mines. But if you look at uh, what is called negative externalities in economics, you have to touch the ones who are there because at some point they are going to leave. Uh, you don't wait for them to leave to start uh, talking about what to do with acid mine drainage. So that policy uh, is going to be processed. I think it's going to FOSAD next week and it's going to go to cabinet committee and it will go to cabinet for approval. It's the policy that talks to, to the transgressors. I think uh, you refer to them as transgressors. Um, Chairperson, I don't know, groundwater, DM covered it and covered it very well. The pollution was covered by, by DM, uh, including the coronavirus component. Uh, the question that was raised on uh, um, the 14, 
um, comma nine essays were not paying for water. Yes, this is a challenge that municipalities are faced with. Uh, COCTA is dealing with this daily, and uh, it affects the financial viability of water boards. Uh, because if municipalities are not financially viable, the water boards are not going to be financially viable. I think that question uh, is an ongoing uh, uh, debate. Chairperson, I'm going to leave it to you. If there's any question that I haven't answered, it is not deliberate. Please feel free to raise it again. Thank you very much. Comrade Chair, Chairperson. Last point, Chair, with your permission. Okay. Chairperson, thank you. On the, on the issues around um, our working relations with um, COCTA, it's an area that the relations are very good, but um, I do interact with the Deputy Minister all the time, responsible for COCTA, including finance. And some of the issues that uh, we are grappling with right now we are going to be escalating to our principals uh, as uh, responsible deputy ministers to them. And uh, the magnitude of the work, like you have raised yourselves before, the issue around local government and uh, their differentiated capabilities and resources is a problem. And in our case, Chair, you could see that we are pay paying a biggest premium to intervene in failing municipalities. Whether is it water, uh, is it uh, wastewater treatment works like we're doing it in Fulani, we're in Kauteng, we're in the Free State, we're all over the country. Is one of the issues that uh, we we'll want uh, your excellencies as honorable members that let's discuss interventions in the other spheres because there's normally no provision being made. Whether is it section 139, in terms of the constitution, whether it's in our own, in terms of uh, the Water Services Act. There are points around uh, the wastewater treatment works, Honorable Basoni, we have raised. There is a biggest focus there, but um, the money is to deal with the impact of the wastewater treatment works. The money is not sufficient. Remember what has happened. There's been a growth in population. There's been a growth in terms of households. Then all these have been connected to the existing infrastructure without connect, without actually expanding the current infrastructure. And most of this infrastructure, we've just clogged the system and there's too much infrastructure failure that has happened. We are using both the issues of support in terms of 154, but at the very same time, we're, beca we're beca becoming to be very hard on them that those that continues to pay to pollute, they will have to pay because even the water use charges, that's why we, we are introducing now the waste discharge charge system as part of water use charges. So that at least we can have the money that we could be able to use just to remedy or to correct where the, the user was unable to correct before we put a bill on their table. But generally, Chair, we've tried our best. If there's a limitation on certain questions, it's not deliberately and it's not malicious. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. May I ask a question which has not been answered? OK. I wanted to hand it over to the Chair before you, you proceed. Uh, chair Dodobu? No, it's, it's OK, Chair. Um, I'm satisfied. I don't have any question, but at the end, when we are done, no, I wanted you to all the to questions. take over. Oh, must, must I take over? That's a question. Yes. Oh, no, I don't have any question. I'm going to propose that for the next 10 minutes or so, if you say I take over, we must check whether is there any member who feels very strong that one question has not been answered adequately, does so, so that we wrap up the discussions. A any member? Yes, uh, Chair. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, the department thank has you. not answered this question. Uh, my question was, is the internal audit committee in the 2020 to 2021 budget process 
capacitated so as to monitor ongoing supply chain management and procurement transgressions in the department. And then another one, which is the last question, which have not been answered, is why has the department not allocated uh, program four uh, on water sector regulation a larger budget so as to employ more water compliance monitors thank you chair okay okay is that the only question Any yes if there are no questions it's okay honorable members if you are satisfied it's fine any other men member are you all satisfied i guess so Yes, those are the two questions, uh, Honourable Deputy Minister. Thank you, Comrade Chair, Your Excellency. Uh, I, will, I, I try to answer this question, but probably Comrade DG, the one on internal audit, will probably looking at the sense and figures because it's a specific issue around budget. But, uh, Honorable, what I can say with respect to water sector regulations, we regulation in our case, uh, Honorable Chair, is twofold. One of the things you people are, are actually engaging on what you call it self regulation. Remember when we give you a license or we give you a water permit. There are conditions that are attached to a person. For an example, that at a particular point, you need to be able to ensure that the water is managed efficiently. You implement the water conservation and demand management measures, issues around effluent that must be discharged. That's why even these issues around your blue drop and green drop, these are matters of self-regulation that institutions on their own must produce this information. But then there's a duty of us as a regulator. As a regulator ourselves, remember the budget is not sufficient. We are actually looking at how certain people within the system, because there are many people who are actually within the system and we have actually established even, what do you call it, an anti-pollution task team. That anti-pollution task team, it was just a, a nomenclature we used because uh, issues of pollution were just more uh, prominent in the media. But in the reality, these are the people that are doing regulations and enforcement. We are also deploying issues of using technology because the way the country and the water resource network it is, Jefferson, and the number of users will not be everywhere all the time. And that's why we're actually using the web-based system deploying technology so that we can be able to say, when you send a soldier on the ground, you know that you are able to deal with certain issues. Our regulatory approach is becoming more uh, re repurposed for the current conditions so that we can be able to do that. At the very same time, there are these youngsters, you remember them, the war on, the war on leaks. Some of these youngsters are some of these people that were going to be retraining we are going to be using some of them because of the capacity they have so that they can do monitoring on the ground. Currently, we are using some of them. They are monitoring even the rollout of those uh, uh, immediate intervention on COVID-19. But the issue around rents and cents, around internal audit, DG, unless there's something, Comrade Mbou, you still want to add. Thank you. Thank you, DM. Uh, Chairperson, there was a question about schools, uh, uh, the provision of water to schools. I don't know if we have answered that question. Let me start with that question first. The, the Department of Water, of water and Sanitation has contracted with basic education and rainwater to prioritize the provision of water to more than 3,400 schools. The exact figure is in the implementation protocol. Uh, Rainwater will be administering that program on behalf of the Department of Basic Education. So myself, the DG of uh, Basic Education and the CEO of Rainwater have signed a three-party agreement. Uh, basic Education has put aside a budget of 600, uh, 600 million rands. 
In fact, one of the reasons why minister is attending to this issue is because there's pressure on both the minister and the minister of basic education to make sure that we get we target all of those schools that do not have water, so that by next week the majority of schools do have uh, water. Uh, the second question is about internal the capacity of internal audit. The capacity that you are talking about it resides within the department's internal audit unit. And this is one of the most efficient components in the department. It's the component that does all the oversights around budgeting, all the oversights on irregularities. They also assist us uh, in investigation. There's a forensic investigation unit within the internal audit component of the department. So there is capacity, but uh, capacity cannot be enough. Uh, but uh, sometimes we supplement it with uh, service providers. Uh, they come in, if we are overstretched, we bring in some service providers, but internally we do have that capacity. What you don't want is to rely on external service providers uh, to do most of this work. So we do have that capacity chair in internal audit component. I think Diane has answered the question on program four, uh, the budget for program four, but this budget on program four is also supplemented through the water trading of CMAs. Uh, remember, CMAs also do the work as well in terms of regulation. So we use that budget of the CMAs uh, to supplement uh, the budget of program four. Uh, you would have noticed that uh, that budget didn't perform well uh, last year, but uh, we have managed to achieve most of the targets. If you look at the licensing, for instance, we have reached, I think we have achieved more than 80% of, uh, of of the targets, so we're not we're not very much worried at this stage about that budget, the program four budget. Uh, it is likely to go up, but we, in the meantime, we are supplementing it uh, through the CMAs. Um, yeah, I'm trying to check if there's any other question that uh, I haven't touched. Chairperson, I think I, I we have answered the three questions that were not answered before. Chairperson, chair. Okay, who's that? Uh, on the chat section, there's a question there that we pose. Okay. The question is reading as follows. Have the department completed their fourth quarter expenditure report for 2019-20? If so, can we have the copy? They can just send the copy to us. Thank you. Hmm. Just less than a minute in answering that. The comrade Chair will definitely do that. Yes, over to you. Chairperson was saying that the request by honorable members will provide the information just also to indicate what uh, the DG has said with respect to fighting corruption. We don't only rely on internal audit alone. There are issues around the uh, issues of vetting in the department, uh, issues of declarations, and the procurement process is very transparent. Remember, we need to publish some of these things when we do all these other ones. But we do agree that um, strengthening the, the capacity to investigate inter, uh, internally is an important one, and uh, we accept. Thank you, Chair. Oh, oh, all right, thank you very much, Chair. Once more, Honorable Deputy Minister, I think this was a good engagement with the department and sometimes we as members of parliament when we are not happy we we do express our unhappiness to the departments as part of our oversight work and when we are satisfied and when we believe that the department is doing quite well we need to we need to applaud you and I think in this particular instance, as, as I indicated from the beginning, just listening to, to you and just reading the presentations which were submitted to, to us, it does indicate that you are not only hands-on, but you have made important strides in terms of correcting the, weak, the serious weaknesses which were there in the past. And, 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 and as members of parliament, we think we are going to continue to, to hold you accountable 
as a, as a department. We are going to uh, continuously engage with you on all the issues that you raise uh, with us. We are going to really watch you and, and make sure that at the end of the day, you are positioned, you are at a point where you are able to fulfill your constitutional obligations. As people always say, water is, is life and sanitation is, is dignity. And we need to ensure that that motto uh, is, is realized in more practical terms. And in that sense, I think we are going to do our oversight work to ensure that this department becomes a better department and you emerge from, 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 from those troubles that you had in the past to ensure that you succeed. What I also want to point out is that uh, as part of the oversight work that we are going to do uh, going forward, we are going to engage the department with all the investigations that the department has undertaken, especially the forensic investigations, to, to ensure that whatever wrongdoing that happened in the past is corrected. Whatever, whoever is, is, is responsible for that is held accountable because at the end of the day, we are saying that consequence management is important in government to ensure that at the end of the day, the people themselves who are the beneficiaries of these particular programs like water provision uh, do receive water and that they are satisfied and with that, their lives are, are, are improved. And I think, as I indicated, just comparing what the, the work that we've covered last year to date, and this inspires much confidence, and it does shows that if we can sustain what we are doing, it will yield a, a better return, and it will make this particular uh, a, 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 a department a contributory to the challenges that that we are facing in terms of in terms of solving those particular those particular challenges. With that, I think. Uh, as I indicated, we are going to continue to engage with you to ensure that we take these particular issues forward. Uh, I just want to check with the uh, co-chair person whether he, she, she has a party shot before we, 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 we close the meeting. Uh, Chairperson, anything or should I close the meeting? No, no, th thanks, Chair. I think uh, we must thank uh, uh, honorable members for the good engagement on the on the on the on the report on the presentation of the department and and i agree with you that uh, at some point we should, we should allow the department to come and brief us as we're going to deal with the third quarter and fourth quarter reports they should be able to to give us feedback on the the work that they have done in investigate for for the investigation uh, of the maladministration that take place in the department uh, um, the, the other important thing is that uh, um, we'll continuously oversight on the work that they are doing in the um, provinces where we are, um, when they install those tankers at school members of parliament, please they must respond to the to their phone when members call them if they need any intervention as they are going to put those uh, tank tank and truck trucks at the at the at the school level thank you very much uh, chair chair Guilty yourself comrade chair oh thank you very much uh, i think uh, oh okay <laughs> yes thank i'm you handicapped very much. I think the meeting okay. is closed, and thank you very much for, for, for responding accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Yes. Uh, which one? W which I'm one? Is machine, are you still there, my brother? Whoever is I still take a step to I've been we waiting for coming from Pumalanga. Coming from Pumalanga, 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 Pumalanga to Johannesburg. <laughs> driving from <laughs> Pumalanga to Johannesburg. Yeah. Oh, I said that excuse to that thing. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. I was in it. I was waiting to be accepted from three till quarter past five, and somebody uh, didn't yeah. accept me. It's not a joke. It's I said that somebody. It's a sabotage. Yeah.
No, no, we, 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 we are very sorry, Honorable Mashia, who will check with the administration what happened. Uh, thank you that you are able to come in. Uh, thank you very much. We are sorry for, for that incident. I have never been denied to be part of the meeting by somebody who does not want me to be part of the meeting. I take exception. Just exception to that thing. No, my same man did a shift. Represent people. I cannot be controlled by someone not to be part of the meeting. I still take exception to that rubbish. Mm. We'll, rubbish. Talk, we'll talk no, on we'll, study group. We'll, no, we'll, we'll I, check who, who has done no. that. Uh, because, uh, I, 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 I was, was I was not locked out in the study group. I was locked out here, not in the study group. I thought, yeah. No, 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 we're sorry, Honorable Mashiro, on behalf of the administrators who have done that. They will have to tell us what happened. Thank you, so, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Police, you can close your system. Thank you. Bye. Bye.